Hey, welcome to the Fearless Millionaire Podcast. This is your host, global fearless leader, Nathan Amaral, coming to you live from St. Michael, the one of the largest islands of the Azores. And it's awesome to be with you here today. Uh, today is actually a very uh, unique day uh, because we're kind of turning seasons here, right? We're going from you know, autumn and winter, you know, I'm sorry, we're going from summer to over into autumn. And, you know, whenever there's a change of season, I always find that sometimes, you know, even myself will find that, you know, we try, tend to like turn the wheels a little differently. Like things, you know, become more real, like the end of the year, you know, most people around June, they start feeling like, oh, you know, um, I really, you know, there's only six more months until the end of the year. Well, guess what? We're actually like just a few weeks away. We're literally like 63-ish weeks. I'm sorry, 63-ish days away, I think it is. Um, basically, just a few months away from the end of the year, um, however long it is. Um, but <laughs> what really tends to happen at this point is what I find at the end of the year is I usually hear people saying like, Oh my gosh, the year's almost done. What did I do? How much did I get done? You know, did I really, I didn't do what I wanted to do at the beginning of this year. And now there are people that are just trying to play catch up, right? They're just trying to play, and there's no mustard in the mix. All right. I know that was probably not that funny, but the reality is people are just trying to catch up and trying to, you know, achieve the goals that they set off at the beginning of the year before the year ends. And some people even put this off to the end of the year in December. But I know personally that when I'm trying to, you know, really get down and dirty down to my my uh, <clears throat> my business and trying to get things done, usually October tends to be that month. September for me is the month where, you know, I'm kind of more relaxed. I'm kind of having a little more fun. Um, and I don't know why. It's just always been a month for me where when I look back at my records and my track history and results, whether I was in sales, whether in real estate, September has never been a super busy month for me. Um, it's always been a month of relationship building, which is really interesting. Maybe that's not because it's been my birthday month or anything, or you know, it, it, it's uh, you know the the international uh, you know fearless day or anything, but not because of that. I just think it's more of a month where traditionally I found that my results have come from building relationships during September. So, Hey, uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe it's different for you, but when October ticks around, it's really the point of where it's time to like kick it into over gear. But listen to the topic of today's podcast is discovering what are the biggest things that are holding you back. Right now there are, you've probably gone through uh, at this point, you've probably gone through the most of the year and said, you know what? I haven't done most of the stuff I set out to achieve, why not, right? That question has to come up, like, why have I not achieved the things that I've done, right? So in order to discover what that is, because you can you can lay out all these excuses, like I didn't have time, I didn't have resources, I didn't, you know, I was busy, or this life tragedy happened, and of course, things do happen, things get in the way, of course. However, there's always that amount of time. You know, it, it reminds me of, uh, I think last week, I was talking about movies to someone and someone, uh, you know, uh, just a friend of mine said, you know, um, how, how do you watch all these movies? How have you seen all these movies? And it was, uh, and I said, well, you know, I, years ago, I just made the time to watch them, right? I just, Literally, I just made the time and I, and I said when, you know, more when I was single and, and even when I was with somebody, actually, even when I was dating, I like my date nights would be watch a movie at my place, right? That was pretty much my thing. So I've gotten in a lot of movies over the years and, you know, I'd probably watch multiple movies a week. So today I have quite a track history of watching all kinds of movies from independent films, indie films to, you know, the most popular ones out there. So Anyway, um, the point of what I'm telling you here is that, you know, the reality is we can all make time for what we truly want. So when there's something that's holding you back, it's not just that life gets in the way. It's not that you're super busy or stuff's happening in your life. It's actually because you didn't really, it's something even deeper than that. It's not like you didn't have the time because at the end of the day, we all know we have some time. That's the truth of it. We all do. We all have time. We all have five minutes in our day to pick up the phone and call someone. We all have five minutes in the day. Um, we all have like 20 minutes in the day to go for a quick run. We all have 15 minutes in the day to do a, get in a quick workout. We all have that time. It's just a matter of, do we have the energy? Do we have the motivation? Do we have the persistence 
to actually get out there and do it and make it happen. And some, sometimes what we don't realize is that the biggest things that are holding us back have nothing to do with time at all. They really don't. That's just a lie that we use as humans to like warp our mind to say, yeah, I don't have time. I'm busy. You know, I'm busy. I have a busy life. Well, yeah, everybody's busy at the end of the day, but yet more and more statistically when people do the research, when these really smart people do research at how much time people spend on YouTube and how much time people watch TV and how much time do people watch movies or how much time do people spend on Facebook and how much time people spend on this or that and whatever. Well, guess what? There is time, right? And, you know, my mentor once told me, he said, you have to find the time. And that is by using a strategy called net time, N-E-T, net time. And that means no extra time. That means while you're doing something, you're, uh, you're getting in that other thing that you're trying to do. I'll give you an example. Um, I love and I'm absolutely addicted to running. I've been doing actually running for probably like three months now and I absolutely love it. Well, while I run, I make sure I get in an audio book. Okay. So not a whole audio book all the time, but sometimes I'll listen to like maybe three or four chapters while I'm on my run. Now, before running, I actually used to listen to my audiobook time, used to be about 30 minutes to an hour in the morning before I even started my day. Well, what I've done is I've combined my running and my audiobook time together. I've actually found that I have a little bit more time now because I've merged the two together and I'm getting fit and I'm enjoying the run and I feel more healthier and I feel good. I get a lot more energy. So guess what? I've actually combined the two and now I have, I've done NET time, no extra time. I've actually combined two things together. So that's, that's things you have to consider. Like if you're stuck in traffic in a traffic jam, um, are you listening or reading a book? Are you calling a, uh, a contact to build a relationship in your business? Are you managing things that you are working on paperwork, whatever it may be? Any tea time is no extra time. You have to think of things that you can combine things to do. And I'll give you another perfect example. I was actually getting um, this car. I was at a car mechanic place and I was getting this car uh, maintenance. It's not my car, but I was getting uh, it fixed at the maintenance shop. And what was supposed to be 10 minutes turned into like over about an hour uh, of wait time. Well, I didn't just sit there and look around the room and all that. Actually, what I did was I immediately said, well, I was going to do my emails after this time, after I got out of the car menu, uh, mechanic place. And what I decided to do is said, you know what? I'm going to whip open my phone and my computer and I'm going to work on this right now while I'm waiting, right? You see no extra time getting things done all at the same time. So that's some of the things you have to really consider and think about when you're trying to get things done. But what my point of this podcast today is not just to talk about putting things together. It's actually discovering why are you putting things off? What is really stopping you from getting out there and doing that thing? What is really holding you back from <clears throat> really trying to have that moment of, man, I'm just going to go out there. And I'm going to crush this. I'm absolutely going to do it. What's, what's really holding you back, right? And that's something you have to think about. So I want to cover about uh, eight things here that could really be holding you back from actually doing what you're trying to. So whip out a pen and paper, whip out your phone, get ready to take some notes because in, in this podcast, we're going to talk about the biggest things that are holding you back. All right. So in number one, we're going to talk about f the most important one, which is the essence of what fearless millionaire is all about. And that is fear, fear, fear can be the biggest thing that can hold you back from truly achieving what you're trying to do. Now you can think of, I can name, list and name off a bunch of different things here of what's holding you back and so can you. But at the core of it, you have to really understand what's truly holding you back. And most of the time, literally 95% of the time, what holds people back is fear. Now I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I have a few clients that, you know, that work um, with building relationships in their business. And sometimes they don't get around to doing that even though it's the most important thing. Now they'll fill their schedule with other things in their life, like whatever, fill in the blank. Got to take the kids to school, got to, you know, organize the desk, got to do this or that, right? So they'll figure out a whole bunch of different things to put in the way of building the relationships in their business because there is a fear of building the relationships, you see? So sometimes when we have fear, 
in our lives. Well, we all have fear. So sometimes when we allow the fear to stop us from truly getting done what we need to be, that will actually stop us. We'll actually go in an entirely different direction just to avoid fear. Did you know that? Have you ever found yourself like you were, you knew what you had to do, you knew you were supposed to go in this direction, and then all of a sudden you just went down this road and then a week or month later you're like, how did I get here? Why am I off my path? What happened? Why did I lose focus? Have you ever experienced that? Well, if you have, that's because of fear. If fear is probably the one that got you to go in a different direction because there's <clears throat> this really comes down to fear, focus, and faith. It's the three F's. So fear, focus, and faith can really like change your life. You can use fear. Some people think fear is like, oh, it's a scary thing. It's the boogeyman under the bed. It's not really actually. Most of us adults are not fearing what's under our beds, but we're fearing like, what are people going to think of us? What are people going to say about us? You know, there's so many, uh, you know, fears that creep up. Uh, with with pride and ego that have a much bigger impact than the boogeyman underneath the bed, right? So what, what, what really gets people is you can harness the fear that happens. You can use it. You have to manage it and use it as, a, as like a trigger point to help you launch you into your life to do what you're trying to get done. So you have to like play with fear. You have to dance with it. As some of my mentors have told me over the years, you have to dance with fear in order to actually move forward in your goals and dreams that you're trying to achieve. Now, faith um, is something of the belief. So you have to have the belief that you're going to achieve what you're set out to do. And then focus is to be completely focused on that one thing. So what faith can do, uh, excuse me, what fear can do is sometimes it, fear can actually help, you know, just trigger losing faith and figure and can trigger losing focus. Uh, you can be so blinded by fear that you actually lose sight of those two other faith and fear uh, words in your life and those actions. So just keep that in mind because fear is usually like the number one thing that stops a lot of people from doing exactly what they're trying to get done in their life and they don't make it happen because of fear. So here's what to do, right? Let's get, let me give you some action steps. Um, and actually, all this is actually mapped out in the Fearless Millionaire Freedom Formula course. If you haven't gone through that course yet, you should definitely get your hands on it and go through that course and identify the fears that are holding you back in your life. Because once you identify the fears, then you're able to have real breakthrough. And I think most people go at it the wrong way. Most people go at you know, um, their business or their life, they, they go at it and they try to figure out life and they go zigging and zagging and all this other direction, but they don't really identify What's, what's really holding them back? What really is stopping them? Uh, the fears that are blocking them. And once they discover those roadblocks, then they can say, okay, I have to go full force into this. And most people don't really identify those. They don't take the time. But if you take the time to find out what it is and have that breakthrough, you will have much more clarity and focus than ever before. Um, and you can all, you can discover what that is and what's holding you back in the free fearless millionaire freedom formula program. So get your hands on that as well. All right. Number two, I want to tell you about is self doubt. Self doubt is number two. And, uh, that is something that can hold you back, but not believing that you can achieve what you set out, setting out to do, not believing in yourself that you can, um, start a business, not believing in yourself that you can make an offer on a piece of real estate, not believing in yourself that you're actually going to make more money than you did last year, right? Not believing in yourself that you can pick up the phone and call and build a relationship with a buyer or a seller or, uh, you know, um, a broker, right? Whatever it is for you in your life, um, you know, you have to, you have to keep that in mind, uh, that the self doubt can creep up. It can creep up in your life and you start second guessing yourself because now you're, you're doubting your abilities. You're doubting your, uh, capacity. You're doubting your talents and your gifts. Again, if you want to rebuild on your self, on your self doubt, you want to know like, Hey, I want to, I want to be confident. I want to know, like, I want to be sure about what I'm doing. That's probably because you haven't gotten clear on what your talents, goals, and abilities are. Excuse me, your talents and your abilities are. I said goals, but your talents and abilities. Once you are clear on that, then you can be totally more confident. I'll give you a perfect example. Years ago, I learned this from my mentor. And he said to me, uh, my, my mentor, Jim Rohn, once told me, he said, you have to discover what your unique ability is. Once you discover your unique ability, then you can launch yourself in that area. 
So over the years, I've asked people like, hey, what do you think my unique ability is? What do you think I'm great at? What do you think, you know, just really when you think of me, what do you think of? And I've heard all kinds of things over the years like, oh, you're Mr. Sunshine or you bring out the best in people. You help people to see opportunity. You really can listen to someone and have good perspective. Most recently, I heard that someone just came up to me and told me they said you have you have a really good knack for um, antici people anticipating people's needs. And that's very true. And I learned that from my mentor. Even Jim Rohn uh, taught me that, you know, I, I anticipate people's needs. And uh, again, that's another compliment I got recently. And, and I stand on those things. So the point of why I'm bringing that up is you have to know what your unique abilities are so that you can crush self-doubt and say, no, this is my unique ability. I am gifted in this area. This is my talent. This is what's natural to me. And once you stand on that and once you're confident in that, guess what? Self-doubt starts to just fade away. It's like self-doubt, no way, right? Self-doubt, no way. Another way you can do self-doubt is by taking some massive action in your life. For me, self-doubt was when I first walked on fire um, when I was 18 years old. And that completely changed my life. At first I was like doubting myself. I was like, really, can I really do this? Is this really possible? Um, and you know what, as soon as I did it, bam, changed my life, right? As soon as I did it, just everything changed. Um, same thing when I first, when I, for, I was, I'll never forget when I was like on my, when I was building my business, I was like, man, am I really going to make a thousand dollar check? Am I really going to get paid a thousand dollars? Once I made that thousand dollars, bam, it was like, wow, it happened. Right? So that builds confidence. Action will build confidence. But if you're not taking action, it's probably because you're gripped in fear. And once you, once you build that confidence, guess what? The self doubt starts to fade away. All right. Number three, another thing that's holding you back is pride pride. Once you, you listen to this, you got to put your pride to the side. All right. Pride is a mixture of our next one um, as well. But pride is where you allow you to get in front of everything else. Right. It's like it's all about your feelings, your emotions and putting you before everything. Okay, so your pride will is where you're not being a servant in your business. Pride is where you are actually just caring all about what you're doing, how great you are, how you look to other people, how you feel towards other people, what they think about you, people's opinions, right? That's all pride. All that builds up pride, pride, pride. Now, I always say there's two kinds of pride. There's the pride of a prideful heart. And there's a pride where you can literally like be so proudful on the inside that people are like, oh, that guy is so cocky or arrogant, right? There's just this pride that really no one likes. And that is a, that is a mixture of, you know, only care about yourself and what's going on in your life. And then there's another pride, which I call national pride. That's how I call it. I call it national pride. And national pride to me is you can be proud of your country. You can be proud of something that you did just because you you got something and you achieved something. Just because you can have pride in that. You can have national pride in that is what I'm talking about here. Um, it doesn't mean you have to be proud and like tell everybody about it. And this is what I did and thump your chest or stick your chest out and, and walk in a new certain type of way. That's a bad kind of pride, right? Um, and if you have that kind of pride, you're not going to last too long. People are not going to like you. They're going to kind of tend to away from you. They're not going to relate to you. But if you have a national pride, which is what I call national pride, is more like you're proud of what you did and you stand like, wow, that you just you you respect what you've done. National pride is respect. And when you have a respect for yourself and what you've achieved, doesn't mean you have to show it off and be all flashy about it. But you know what? You have a respect for what you've done, the hard work you've put into it, and you have a, a pride that actually um, sinks much deeper and people will actually feel that. They'll feel the difference between the prideful heart and the national pride that you hold. Everyone can respect national pride. Everyone's going to respect that. It's National pride is very different than a prideful heart. So just keep that in mind that you don't want pride. Of a, of a bad heart or a pride that's all about yourself. You want more of the respectful pride, the pride that, you know, um, relates to things like having a national pride about your country, being proud about your family, being proud of something that you, you kept on doing and you finished and you didn't give up. Right. So those are, those are the kind of prides of a good heart that you want. All right. The next one, something that's been holding you back is probably your ego. Now, my good buddy Dave Seymour once uh, once told me, and he still says it to this day, ego stands for ease God out. 
Ease got out. That means taking ease is also another word for like removing God out of your life. All right. Once your ego is, is for, if your ego is first and foremost, this is where people like get a big head. There's different words people use for this, like getting a big head, can't fitting through the door because their ego's so big and it's all about them and it's all about who they are and they only care about themselves and what they look like and how they're presented to other people and everything's ego, um, on them. So if your ego is super big, guess what? It's going to be super hard to do more deals. Yeah, don't get me wrong. You will be, you'll, you'll do stuff for a while. You'll be able to get there for a while, but it's not going to keep you there. Oh, and I just heard this awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm serious. It was very awesome. And I want to share it with you. It was a quote from this angel. I'm not kidding you. He's, he's just a pastor friend of mine. And we recently reconnected here on the island. But, you know, he left me with a really powerful statement. And he said this. He said, you know, charisma will take you to the top. But character will keep you there. He said charisma will, you know, charisma is, you know, excitement, enthusiasm. That will get you to the top. But your character will keep you there. See, sometimes there's people who have all this charisma, all this excitement, all this passion, and yeah, it will, all that energy will get them to the top of something. But if they don't have character, that's only going to last so long. And it's the same with ego. Ego is the same way. Sometimes your ego is only going to take you so far that after a while, your ego just gets in the way and then you're not going to get anywhere and you won't even last. So keep that in mind because sometimes your ego can be holding you back from truly what you're trying to achieve. So notice how like pride and ego can go hand in hand with things. All right, the next one, the next thing that's holding you back is stupidity. So let me explain what I mean about stupidity. And what I find a lot of people do is sometimes people jump, get into something that they don't know a lot about and they let stupidity stop them, right? So here's the thing. Some people feel like they need to know it all. They feel like they need to know everything. And because they don't know anything, they feel like, oh man, maybe I'm stupid. Or they don't want to look stupid. Then they, then they don't actually do anything. So some people just want to look smart or they want to make sure that they don't look stupid, right? So stupidity can actually hold you back. Now, I don't mean by you being stupid. I mean you thinking you're stupid or you thinking other people are thinking you're stupid, right? You don't want that. So here's the thing. You have to look at, first believe, first you have to believe that one, you are not stupid. That's how you're going to overcome this. First, you have to believe you are not stupid, that you are gifted, that you're a child of God, that you truly have the talent and abilities to do anything that you put your mind to. That's the first thing. Secondly, when you're dealing with other people, when you might believe they think you're stupid, right? And so, oh, I don't want to, do, you know, if I do this, if I go after this, or if I try to achieve this thing that I'm going for, people are going to think I'm stupid, right? Or they're going to think I'm not, I don't know what I'm talking about. See, that's where the pride comes back in. You see that? And your ego, those things get mixed up. So you're, you're throwing the combination of those three things all together. Your pride, your ego, your stupidity, your self-doubt, your fear. You see how all these things all tie in together? You see that? Just these five right here, they can all tie in together. You can actually have a fear of talking to other people about business or ideas because why? Right, there's the fear. Why? Because you think you don't want them to think you're stupid or you don't know what you're talking about. Well, there goes your pride. Your pride just kicked in. Then your little bit of self-doubt, like mm, maybe you're not sure about what you're talking about. Now your ego just picked up. You see how they all combine? All this is deeply rooted in fear, by the way. All of them. So be careful. Try to be aware of these things because this is what will help you give some really breakthrough. I know some of the stuff I'm talking about right now is not really sexy. It's not. Most people are not going to talk about it in business. They really won't. You won't usually typically hear this stuff on an online training or a webinar or on, on a seminar. Most of the time, people won't talk about these things. And that's because they're not that sexy. What's really sexy is how much money you can make in 10 days or 30 days or, you know, change your life forever now, that kind of stuff. But actually, if you dive into these core things, these are the things that you can have really major breakthrough. And this is not just Nathan saying that. This is not me, your friend, telling you this. This is years and years of research even before Nathan was born, right? This is actually passed down to me from my great mentors, my late mentor, Jim Rohn, who taught me how to identify and have major breakthrough in my life. My 
buddy Tony Robbins, who literally showed me how to not just have mental breakthrough, but have physical breakthrough through by taking massive action. Right. And and those are the things that I'm sharing with you. All right. The next one, let's jump into it, is opinions. Oh, man, we've already kind of really touched on this already as we've gone through some of these examples that people's opinions can hold you back. Not only their opinion, but their opinion can also deter you into an entirely different direction. Someone's opinion about your life and your business and the way you're building your business or how slow or fast you're going or how much money you have, right? All these opinions can actually turn you away from where you're going. It can actually stop you or hold you back from what you're trying to achieve. But you know what? You have to you have to just cross those things out. You can't listen to it. You have to be completely focused on where you're going and what you're doing. And the freedom formula will truly give you that cre- that clarity. It's going to give you that clarity so you can have confidence. That's what you need. That's what you need to, to, to avoid all these things and to break through and have the uh, avoid these things that are holding you back. You need to have that, cl- that clarity so that you can gain the confidence. All right, next is knowledge. All right, knowledge can hold you back as well. Now, you, if you're a fearless millionaire and you're in our fearless millionaire family, And you're growing your life, you're growing your business, maybe you're going to a million dollars, maybe you're going to a million euros or a a million views, a million subscribers, a million books sold, a million whatever, a million people you want to feed, whatever it is for you. What you have to understand as you go into this is knowledge, right? Knowledge is power and applied knowledge is results. So what you truly need to understand about knowledge is one, you need to acquire it. You need to always be reading about stuff in your industry. If you're in the car business, you're in the automobile industry, then guess what? You need to read about it. What can hold you back is not educating yourself. If you're not educating yourself, and I'm not talking about going to university, I'm not talking about going to get certified or certificates. I'm talking about self-education. Self-education is the most powerful education you'll ever have. That's where you are involved. You take the time. You you are reading. You are studying. You are watching videos on your own time. Maybe you're even talking about it with other people, meeting in focus groups. Maybe you're even talking about it and teaching on it, right? Your knowledge will, the more you acquire the knowledge, the more you won't be held back. But if you lack knowledge, if you don't have the knowledge, then it's really going to just hold you right back. This doesn't mean you need to know everything. You don't need to know it all, but you need, do need to know some. Otherwise you'll feel like you're going to be held back by not knowing. So be educated and um, read. That's what's really important. We've seen people, all different demographics, all around the world from all different backgrounds, all cultures, all faiths, all, all uh, countries who've gone from nothing to something doesn't matter their education level, but they've studied and their industry, they studied what they're doing and they're masterful because of it, right? So keep that in mind, that knowledge is really important in your, in your life. Okay. The next one is clarity, clarity, super important. Clarity is where if you do, you are not clear on where you're going, what you're doing, what you're trying to achieve, the road you're taking. If you are not clear on your mission, then you're going to be easily sidetracked. You're going to just, you're going to always be in this. You're going to be easily sidetracked. You'll end up in a fog and you won't really know what you're doing, where you're going. And you won't know when to say no. I think that's so important. You won't really know, know, you won't know when to say no. And you have to know when to say no to things so that you can stay clear on your road. So you can actually understand like, oh, this isn't for me. This doesn't align up with my mission. What I always find is that when people uh, lose track and even myself over the years, but I got clear on my mission many years ago. And when I got clear on that, that's when I knew if something popped up like this, a new business opportunity, an entirely different industry, I had to say, no, I said, no, that's not for me. For example, I've been approached so many times over the years to be, to be in network marketing, to be uh, a speaker for certain products. And it, those things didn't align with what I was doing in my life. Now, I have been in network marketing years ago, and I did fairly well with it. But when I discovered my mission, I knew that network marketing, I knew that direct sales, that wasn't for me anymore. 
I knew what my calling was. I knew that I needed to not only, I knew, I knew that I didn't need to be um, in the networking business in one way for networking for sales. I knew I needed to be in networking on a much higher level. Right. So I got clear and then I knew every time someone would approach me and sometimes I get approached at least twice a month about some new opportunity or whatever it is. And if it doesn't align with my mission, then I have to say no. I just say no, that's not me. And the only way I can do that is with with clarity because I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I know what my mission is. So make sure you you go through the freedom formula and you know and get clear on what your mission is. Super important. It'll save you a boatload of time and energy. It really will. Because sometimes people go through life and they are wondering in what their purpose is. They're wondering if this is the right place for them. Right? You ever felt that way? I know over the years I have. Over the years, you know, when I was trying to find out what, what my mission was and what my calling was, I was jumping from one thing to another and trying to find that clarity. And actually, when when my mentor sat me down and had me go through a few exercises, that's when I that's when I became cl- completely clear. That's when I knew that this is everything I wanted to do moving forward. Like this was my calling. This was my mission. And when you are clear on your mission, that's when you know you're going in the right direction. When you're clear on your mission, just follow that road. The road to success is never straight, but you just continue to walk it because you'll eventually get there. All right. And the last one that we have on our list for today for this podcast. Thanks for bearing, getting with being with me this entire, entire way. Thanks for bearing it up. And, uh, and thanks for listening to this podcast all the way through. And if you've gotten something, some new knowledge or nugget out of this podcast and this episode, let me know. Shoot me a message. Give it a like. Let the community know. Share your thoughts back of what you gained from it. The last one that we're going to cover is purpose. And this is probably the most, the one that's the most profound thing. This ties right into clarity and your mission. But the last one is purpose. And this can be the biggest thing that can hold you back because if you are not clear with clarity on what your purpose is, it can really hold you back from living a life that you truly want and desire. Your purpose is where you wake up every morning, whether whether the sky is sunny or it's dark and cloud and rainy, and you know why you're alive. You know this is what you're called to do. Having a clear purpose is when you know whether there's money in the bank or there is no money in the bank that you know that this is what you're supposed to do, that it's just your purpose. It's why you're here on this earth. It's why you are called to do what you're called. It's like a burning desire in your soul to actually do and have the energy to do what you're trying to get done. Whatever that is for you, that is your purpose. But once you're clear on those things, your mission and your calling, you will have that sense of purpose. If you don't have a clear purpose, guess what? You'll be held back. You'll be held back from living the life you truly desire. You'll be held back from, you'll you'll be held back by all those things that we talked about earlier from fear and doubt and pride, right? All those things will hold you back if you are not clear on your purpose. Once you are clear on your purpose, you'll find that your life gets a lot much more exciting gets more, you get filled with more energy. You enjoy the moments so much more because you are clear. It's a man, you know, one of the things I always find myself doing is I take a few moments in the day, a few moments, sometimes it's like 10 minutes or 20 minutes where I'll just sit or I'll stand and I'll look out somewhere, whether it's in the mountains or whether if I'm in the hills of Uganda, or if I'm at the ocean here in the Azores, or if I'm if I'm standing at the plains in the United States and just looking at the fields and and the greenery, I always find myself being completely grateful and happy because I know I'm clear on my purpose. It's like you can have a peace in your mind and in your heart because you know what you're called to do. And it's that thing that truly ignites you. It's that thing that truly sets you on fire. It's that truly that thing that you just know that this is why I'm here. This is why I'm alive. It's a truly a great feeling. It really is. But the only way you can get there, the only way you can have that, that knowledge and that clarity is by uncovering it 
is by diving into it, spending time in it. Some people will just think about these things and they just think about it and dream about it and wish about it. But those that will never become real if you do not put it down on paper or put it in your phone or get super clear about what you're trying to do. Take some time. Go through the free, the freedom formula. It will take you step by step through some action guides and through some action techniques and um, get really clear on that first on your purpose. And guess what? Everything else gets a lot more clear for you. Everything else just starts to fade away. And go out there and take some massive action. Really, just take some massive action on your goals and dreams. And a lot of the times when you just start clicking and you start you know ticking away at your goals and dreams everything starts to get a lot easier your fear kind of subsides and the you know the, the the people's opinions you start to care less about and all that stuff kind of just fades away after a while which is a beautiful thing so i wanted to share those things with you that sometimes those are the biggest things that can be holding you back so get clear on these things get clarity on the fear your self doubt what any pride if you have a big ego Get clear on, uh, you know, are you, do you care about other people's opinions? Are you, do you feel like, you know, people would think you're stupid, right? Get clear on that if that's really holding you back. Maybe you, you wouldn't feel good if you didn't have enough knowledge, right? Figure out what those are for you. Let me know if you got clear and you discovered what's really holding you back. I'd be curious to know, uh, and I hope that this has been helpful to you. Give it a like, and be sure to check out our other podcasts. You can also give us a review on iTunes. That would be super awesome if you did that. And also uh, share this with someone, with another person that you know you might know that they're into reading or they're into this kind of uh, mindset juju, <laughs> and uh, pass it on to them and let them uh, you know get get a listen in. Thanks so much for listening, and I will catch you next time on the Fearless Millionaire podcast. See you.